Good morning and welcome to worship. Um, we're out here today uh, getting ready for our planting of fall crops, which includes carrots, and um, we're just doing the life of the church. We welcome you to worship today. We invite you to set aside whatever it is you're doing, even if it's doing some work for the Lord, and set this time aside just for worship. We pray that um, you will be able to feel and be moved in this moment and connect truly with God. One of the ways that you do that is in worship, but you also do that through some of our learning. And I want to remind you that our Wednesday night classes will be starting soon. So look for that information in the iBridge and on the Facebook page, and we invite you to join one of our classes this fall. But again, in this time, let's worship. And tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrow cease, tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood availed for me. He speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise, ye dumb, your loosened tongues employ. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. In Christ your head you then shall know, shall feel your sins forgiven. Anticipate your heaven below, and home that love is heaven. Burks, our first scripture today comes from Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush. Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for this place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring Isra the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. 
But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey friends, it's Mini Jam. I'm so excited and I've been praying for you. And I've been enjoying um, the pictures you've been putting on Facebook of you praying and reading scripture with your pets. You guys are doing such a good job. Um, but today in Mini Jam, we are gonna talk about calendars. Now I would assume probably many of you have a calendar in your home, um, in your classroom. If you're like me, I have calendars everywhere. I have one on my phone. I have one on my computer. I have one in my kitchen, in my office. So we keep calendars because calendars help us mark time and keep track of things. Some things are fun things like holidays and birthdays. And some things are not so fun things like dentist appointments and doctor checkups. But calendars help us keep in track. It's a very, very valuable tool. But an ex Expired calendar is really no good, right? Because the dates in the calendar have already happened. It's all in the past. Just like in a few months, this calendar will be useless. If you've been to a store recently, you've seen that they've already got 2021 calendars for sale. When calendars expire, there's no use for them. And all the ones at the store, they all go into the trash because nobody would want to buy and nobody would really want to keep an expired calendar. No one thinks of keeping an expired calendar in their home, but many times we keep memories of our past mistakes, don't we? I know I do. If this calendar had all my past mistakes in it, I wouldn't be showing it to you. I would be too embarrassed. There's all things we wish we hadn't have done or we wish we could have do it, done it differently or all over again. But because we believe in Jesus, you know what? The Bible says we don't have to worry about our past mistakes and our past sins. Jesus takes our sins away. And Psalm 103.12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And our transgressions are just a very big fancy word for our sins because we've all sinned. We all feel bad about some of the things that we've done. So just like an expired calendar, Jesus has forgiven us. And just like this expired calendar, we can throw it away and we cannot worry about it anymore. Just like this is a new school year. If you had some trouble with maybe friends or schoolwork in the past school year, this is a new school year. This is a time to stop thinking about your past mistakes and working towards your future and doing the best that you can do. So my challenge for you is to give Jesus all this worry or past mistakes that you're holding on to give it to him because he wants to take it from you and he wants to throw it as far as the east is from the west that's super far they never touch so my challenge for you is to just give all those to god and he wants you to be free of that and start in your new calendar your new future and your new ideas so i hope you guys um enjoy this song next and I hope I see you moving and grooving at home. And I hope I see you moving and grooving in the drive-in church service. I'll see you soon. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye. As we come to a time of offering, I remind you that sometimes what we offer to the Lord is work with our hands. Uh, you can't see it, but Rachel is covered in dirt right now and working hard um, to make sure that we are offering everything that we can to the Lord. Sometimes offering is financial, so we remind you that 
when you give to this church, uh, even if it's if it's your work or if it's your money, um, we work to make sure that that is used to grow God's kingdom, whether it's a plant or in our hearts or learning in class or any of those things. We try to use the funds that you trust with us to grow the kingdom of God. And so we thank you for that and we invite you to give online. Scripture reading today comes from Matthew 16, verse 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and on the third day raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind on not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is come with angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see 
the Son of Man, coming in his kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. You've already heard the scripture lessons read this morning. The first one, the Old Testament lesson, is the one I want to focus on. As a matter of fact, in the next few weeks, we're going to focus on the story of Moses um, pretty much exclusively. We want to talk about his story because his story is one of the basic stories of the Old Testament. And it gives us foundation not only for understanding the Old Testament, but also for helping us to understand our relationship with God today. Moses, when we see him in chapter 3, is, uh, is out in the middle of a field somewhere. Out in the middle of a, a deserted area, way, way away from wherever he started. You remember that story, right? He started at a time of great upheaval in the country of Egypt, and, and he was saved through the miraculous actions of his, his mother and his sister and, and God, who protected him and who brought him to a place where he could survive. And he grew up not, not in a, a small hut with his, his parents, but, but he grew up in the palace the very palace of Egypt and and there he was prepared for lots and lots of things but then things kind of went wrong and we don't have a lot of detail we we just know that that he kept seeing things that were wrong in his life and and he he started pushing back against those and one day he pushed too far and he accidentally, or on purpose, killed somebody. And he had to run, run for his life, run, run just willy-nilly out into the world and, and try to find a place where he could, he could survive and live. And over a long period of time, even though some things went right, he, he found a, a woman to share his life, he found a a father-in-law who was a good guide and, and who helped him to understand what uh, life was about and who gave him a place to live. Here he was 40 years later in the middle of a field with a bunch of sheep and nobody else. It's kind of funny when we when we uh, read this story, how bored do you have to be to look at a bush that's on fire long enough to realize that it's not actually being consumed by the fire? I thought a lot about what that meant. Does it mean there's no smoke coming from it? Does it mean that, that it's just standing there? But from a long distance, he saw it and he looked at it long enough that he finally said, I gotta go take a look at this thing. And as he approaches, he hears a voice. Now this has already got to be a little bit spooky when he's approaching something that he doesn't understand. And then to hear a voice out of nowhere, then that's got to feel really weird. And as he Here's that voice that says, take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. Well, yeah, this is beautiful. It, it's beautiful to be in a place that, that's kind of off by itself. And, and yes, there's a sacredness to the wilderness, um, wherever you are. But he took his shoes off and he heard the voice again and the voice began to tell him that that the voice belonged to God and that he was the God of Moses's forefathers the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob the God that Moses hadn't even really even heard of before 
but that God was coming to find him there in the wilderness. We always think of this story as being this huge drama, and there have been, there have been great movies uh, done about it. The one with Yul Brenner and, and, you know, they and Charlton Heston as Moses, and, and they're out in the middle of the wilderness. It was a, a great production. I really loved it in the early version where they, they had an airplane that was flying across the corner of the screen that nobody remembered to cut out. There have also been cartoon versions of this, uh, animated versions like The Prince of Egypt, which is a really fine uh, retelling of the story. And, and it comes with songs that you can sing along with at the same time. But it's not just this magnificent, huge story like we, we think. Yes, the, the save my people and, and let my people go story that we all know. It's also a story about personal salvation. The themes of, of the book of Exodus are, are that God hears and God saves and then God calls. God hears wherever you are. He hears the groaning of his people. And in Egypt at that time, the, the people were being, were being made into slaves, whereas they had originally been uh, a people that lived there and prospered and, and, and lived next to the Egyptians. Now they were seen as people to be feared. And so they were made into slaves by force. And here in the midst of their slavery, even though they're not considered people anymore, God hears them and God comes to save them. But there's also another cry that we don't ever really talk about. We always think of Moses as, as uh, you know, growing up in the castle and then he's leading all the people, but we forget the 40 years in the middle where he's just lost in the wilderness. And I think one of the most important parts of the story is to realize is that God doesn't just hear great big huge groups of people. God doesn't just hear those that um, have that are big enough to get some sort of political clout. But he hears the individual person whose heart is breaking as well. Here's Moses, someone who was educated well, someone who was raised well, someone who, who had all kinds of potential, and he is nowhere with a few sheep to take care of. And even the family that he's found, he's not with them because he's out in the wilderness taking care of the sheep. We don't know how many nights he cried out to God or cried out to the universe or cried out just in his sleep, wondering how in the world did I get here? And now, in the middle of that wilderness, he finds that God has heard him and has come to see him and has something for him to do. To know that God exists and God cares about you regardless of where you are in the world, regardless of if you're the highest uh, office in the land or, or you're the, the least person that anybody can think of. God cares about you. And God can speak to you, maybe not in a burning bush, maybe not in a, some sort of miraculous way, but that God does care about you. It says so all through the Old Testament and the New Testament. 
God's love, God's everlasting love. God's steadfast love is always with you, even when you're in the wilderness. God is hoping that in the wilderness, you will pay attention to what's happening around you. God's hoping that, that in the wilderness, you'll see something that makes you understand that God is there. God's hoping that, that you will just take the time to listen because that's our first job too. God has heard us, now we have to listen to God and see where God is telling us to go. And it doesn't matter if you've been a member of the church for uh, for 150 years, or, or if you've never set so foot inside a church, if you know all your scriptures by heart, or if you can't even find the New Testament from the Old Testament, it doesn't matter. God wants to speak to you and wants you to listen. And then the second thing is that God saves. Yes, God saved the people of Israel, and it's a, it's a wonderful, beautiful story. We'll look at that. But, but God also saves the individual person off by themselves somewhere who needs to feel the, the presence and the safety of God's, God's everlasting love. So wherever you feel like you are right now, God wants to share that love with you. Wherever you find yourself, whatever problems that you have or, or, or whatever things that you want to share, God is willing to listen to you. But then God also asks you to listen to God. Look in his word. Listen to those who, who have expressed their love for you and find ways that you can be changed by God's love. Because you see, an important part of, of this whole story is that God also calls us. He doesn't call us to stay in the wilderness, to, to just be there and, and be with the sheep or sit and watch the the bush burn and burn and burn and burn and never quit. God calls us to do something instead. I can't imagine the, the, the conversation that went on after he came back. He came back to his father-in-law and to his wife and his children and, and said, I saw God out on the mountain. I saw God on the mountain and God said that I'm supposed to go back to Egypt and help set others free. Somebody probably reminded him that he was wanted in Egypt, that people were maybe still looking for him even after 40 years, but if they saw him, if they were actually saw him there, somebody might recognize him and remember that he's the one that killed the guard. And they would say, this isn't a good idea. I'm sure that some of them would say, are you sure this was God? You didn't need something bad and have a nightmare. Are you sure? However that conversation went, however that conversation went, it would lead Moses back to Egypt. He got called to do something. He, he says when, when God spoke to him the first time, he says, I am here. He wasn't the only one ever to say that. Isaiah said it, the disciples said it, other people said it throughout history. I am here. One of my favorite stories is about St. Francis, who was 
abducted by pirates, Irish pirates, and, and, and after many years was able to escape and he gets back to where he was studying to be a priest before and his bishop says, yes, complete your studies and then I'm going to send you back to the pirates and let you save them. It's just like this story. I'm going to send you back to do something amazing. But you're going to do it the amazing thing, not because you're Moses, but because I am God. And that's where we get the name. God says, tell them that I am has called them out. Moses goes forth. And we'll talk about that more next week. And, and, and things happen. And, and, and as they happen, he grows more and more present with God as he does God's will. The gospel lesson today is a, a powerful time where God is saying, or Jesus is saying to the disciples, we're going to go back to Jerusalem. And some bad things are going to happen there. But through this, I am going to be able to save so many people. Simon Peter, who didn't want to go, he represented the rational side of us. Simon Peter jumps up and says, that, that's never going to happen to you, Lord. We're not going to let this happen. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. In a sense, he was offering, and I know this is pushing it a little bit, in a sense, he was offering even Satan the opportunity to get behind him, which is where followers always are, right? Go with me. Can you imagine that conversation that they might have had? Go with me, Satan, and let me show you what's going to happen. Hmm. If even Satan can get that kind of invitation, and so can we. An invitation to leave the wilderness where we've been, to leave the, the part of our life where we, we aren't sure how we're going to do things tomorrow. And believe me, in today, in 2020, we've all struggled with that. How do I make a plan for tomorrow? How do I make a plan for next week or next month or next year? God doesn't tell Moses where to go. As a matter of fact, Moses didn't really ask for a sign, but, but God offers them a sign. But it's one of those weird signs, like I think only God can do. He said, the sign that it's really me, that I'm really God, is that you'll bring all those people back to this mountain and you'll worship me here. Oh, gosh. By the time I've gotten them all to follow me and get to where we are here, if I don't believe by then, when am I ever going to believe? But God asked him to believe. And Jesus asked the disciples to believe. To believe that here we are. We've got a path to follow. And let's go. We live in a world right now that's filled with all kinds of worries. I, just this week, there were so many things that didn't appear on any of our calendars. There was a, a hurricane that, that came through Louisiana and, and, and another one right before it. There, was, there were shootings that nobody wanted to happen. Nobody planned those. And there's all kinds of discord within our country, and, and nobody had that on their plan either. There's this whole virus thing that, that is something that 
that we didn't count on that has disrupted everything about how we go to school, how we go to work, how we live from day to day, and, and how we can even talk to each other. It seems sometimes like we're way out in the wilderness compared to where we were last year at this time. But I think the answer is still the same. The answer is we still have to hear what God is saying and we have to start following. We may not know where we're going or how we're going to get there or even when we get there. But we have to take that first step to go. Of all the steps that Moses took, that was the most important. The one where he decided, I'm going to follow what God has told me to do. And I'm going to trust God to lead the way. I want to invite you to do the same thing. To listen today to what God is saying in your heart. To, to ask God to work on those parts of you that, that maybe need refining. Those parts that hopefully during the, the 40 years that Moses was in the wilderness or, or with his new people in Midian, the parts that had developed and become stronger you need to ask God to help you do that, to develop and become stronger as his disciple. So I'm going to ask you today to make a commitment. Even with all the craziness going on around us in the world, even in the midst of all of that, God still hears and God still saves and God calls you to step on the path with him. Amen. This is our peace, faithful is our God. He will come through, we won't be moved, faithful is our God.
My soul says yes, my soul says yes to your promises. Oh yes, oh yes, we are standing. Cause the enemy is defeated. We'll always be standing on the promises of Jesus. Yes, we are standing. So our mission this week is to start, start. I know you've started before and, and maybe you will have to start over again sometime. But I'm going to invite you to spend some time this week. Get your Bibles out. Find the book of Exodus. Start reading the, the first chapter. I'm going to invite you to read a couple of chapters a day. If you can do that, you'll more than keep up with us for the next few weeks. And you'll know the story about Moses, but you'll also see the miraculous, amazing work of God in his life. And the, the thing that I want you to see is that, that God found Moses way out in the wilderness. God can find you where you are. And God's love for you is immense. Just like it was for Moses. Come and join us on the path. Join us in Bible studies on Wednesday night. Join us in worship. Join us in sharing the good news in this place where we are and wherever God leads us. Amen.